Son of a bitch, man. We can't keep doing this shit. What's going on, buddy? What's up, brother? Brother. Got the strap on me, no lesbo. Oh. Okay, so this don't really pertain to the video, but like, do y'all genuinely know how to cure a sore throat? They patched the salt water method and that shit is not working for me at the moment, so yeah. But anyway, if you know, tell me. But yeah, enjoy the video. So we start this chapter off seeing everyone posted up after Miguel's entrance. And man, Chukuna has that man Kusakabe messed up right now. Eyes white and his mouth wide open too. That man is beyond Shoko's abilities. But before we go forward, we get a flashback to Africa. And we see that this man Miguel is bald as hell, bruh. She had me laughing at 12 a.m. on a school night when I saw this, bro. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. Dead ass. Could pour a gallon of water on that head and not a drop would stay on there. Shiny as hell. But anyway, as I said, they're chilling in Africa. And Yuta is asking Miguel to pull up to Shinjuku to help them out. And Miguel is like, nah, bro. Go up against the dude who can beat Gojo? Hell no. Y'all already seen how he did me last time. Larue or Nipple Guy, we're going to call him that, starts saying that he'll be all tuckered out after his fight with Gojo. And all Miguel has to do is third party and get a free kill which would be a good deal if this was fortnite but miguel says there's no such thing as getting tuckered out for sukuna and apparently he's also gotten better at japanese so uh good for him yuta tries to tell him that if the merger happens the monster might go beyond the borders of japan and miguel says that even if the monster pulled up and dropped a 40 20 like 1b the other night he would still take that over fighting sukuna dude does not want the smoke with this man he goes on to ask him if he thinks that high-spirited black people can just survive anything, basically telling him that he don't know shit and to stop watching those cheesy 80s movies. Then he says that he don't care about them niggas and he gotta look out for his brothers. And I mean, yeah, y'all can hate all you want, but this low-key valid as hell. Gonna have me running the ones with the king of curses for the love of the game? Nah, screw that, bruh. He goes on to say that if they really wanted him so bad, Gojo should just pull up himself on his knees and beg for help. And Yuta being Yuta is like, hey, you want me to do that for you? And this nigga starts showing him. Poor, <laughs> poor Yuta doesn't even want to ask this man for help no more. Nipple Guy asks if he can have a word with Miguel. And Miguel questions him on what he's going to do. And he says that he just wanted to make Gato the king of the sorcerers. Or whatever the hell that bum wanted to be. And Miguel says that he followed along because Gato was the leader of their group. And now that he's trained Yuta, he don't need to deal with Japan anymore. Nipple Dude starts saying how much they loved him and shit. And Miguel's like, what you want to do, bro? You want us to spin back or something? But the other dude's like, nah. The same way people visit a grave, share a meal, and say goodbye, they'll blast the requirement to the heavens by giving all their might in this fight. Basically saying that that fight will be basically like, I don't know, sending Gato off or whatever. And when I saw this, I was sitting over here like, heaven? You mean with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in them? That man smoking crack. Miguel knows this is some BS too. Glad someone finally gave us a confirmation that this nigga will be chilling with Epstein in them. Really warm my soul. Miguel goes on to say that if he does fight Tsukuna, he got conditions. Which is that they won't fight him until both Gojo and Yuta have lost and he can't use his domain. Nibble guy's like, wait, wait a minute. We? Trying to act like he wasn't trying to recruit this man two seconds ago. And Miguel's like, the more the merrier. And we finally go back to the fight. Miguel and Nipple Dude both notice that Sukuna can't use his domain. He's also down two arms and his RCT is about as functional as CenturyLink Wi-Fi. Plus, his heart isn't fixed yet. Got him feeling good about themselves. About to get a free kill. Or so they thought. Sukuna strikes first, slashing the building. Then Nipple Guy pulls up with this big ass hand he used to carry Kusakabe and ram him into a wall. Sukuna easily slashes through, gives him another, and we see Miguel pull up. And this man starts going crazy. Straight weaving these slashes, no problem. Got Sukuna hitting dance moves, bro. Shit crazy. Then we get some insight on Nipple Dude's technique. Basically, he can conjure a hand that can't be destroyed. And if it sustains damage, the user only takes a tenth of it. So yeah, cool, I, mean, I don't really care. Sukuna doesn't give a damn about that dude, but Miguel, on the other hand, he's interested in. His curse technique is called Hakuna Lana. He uses sound waves, rhythm, and shit, and he's able to expel curses and enhance his physical abilities. Bald ass nigga with a curse technique that involves movement? Yeah, that's a Masai boy if I ever seen one. If y'all don't know, the Masai are basically a bunch of tall ass people. They got fire bead necklaces and bracelets, and the average vert in that clan is like 50, no joke. Think about a basketball, and they're gonna be Space Jam Michael Jordan junking from the free throw line, bruh. They used to scare me as a kid though, but we cool now. Then we get another flashback, and we see Gojo explaining Miguel's technique further. Saying that it's pretty good, but it's not exactly scary. And Miguel is shocked that he knew his technique, and even more shocked when Gojo said he knew it by just looking at him. Scary as hell. Then Gojo starts talking about how 99% of sorcerers are Japanese, but by adding cursed energy to quote unquote, you people's physiques, 
it would make y'all look real menacing. Casual racism against the African race? Huh, my goat could never. He been hanging around Gato too much, bro. And Miguel was like, hey, you making a lot of assumptions right now. That's racist. I'm not special because I'm black. I'm special because I'm me. All right, Miguel X. And he cooked with that shit. I ain't gonna lie. And besides, you can tell that this man Gojo has not been anywhere past the prime meridian. One trip to the southern states and that claim gonna be blown out of the water. And Gojo's like, hey, my bad, bro. And Miguel's like, hi, nigga. And we just got poor Utah over here in the background just watching this. Utah also asked Gojo if being menacing wouldn't apply to him either. And Gojo says that if he and Miguel were to run the ones, no technique, just reinforcement, Gojo would win the marathon, but Miguel would win the sprint. Basically saying that he's like that type of shit I like to see. I really went Rhea certified gold hating on this man just to be out here looking like Shaq because I was not familiar with this man's game. Gasuke to look in shock as he moves his arms in opposite directions and comes in with a right hook and a mean elbow. That we see Chosa posted up menacing as hell. Thought bro was about to cook up something devious just for Sukuna to drop back behind the wall and show him that blue light and snipe him. Got him saying some, ah oh, damn. His ass has done nothing besides get cooked by Sukuna twice bro. 150 years of experience just to have teenagers putting up better numbers than him. Do better bro. And as if on cue, my goat Yuji Itadori comes in from the roof and bodies that old ass man. Put him on his knees too. But y'all thought Sukuna was gonna acknowledge him? <laughs> he out here talking about some, oh you still here? Hating on that boy every chapter like he gonna lose a Duolingo streak if he don't. And speaking of which, I still have yet to hate on Megami this video. But since my MCE is still cooking, let's put that off until later. After Yuji's entrance, we finally get told how Sukuna beat Gojo. To use the wall cutting slash, he needs to use the same hand sign he uses for Malevolent Shrine. But since Gojo had that main paraplegic, he used a binding vow so he could send the slash without it. Thanks to that binding vow though, he's forced to use the hand sign, the chance, and he has to use his palm to direct the slash. After the narrator explains this, we see that Sukuna's other arm has been cut off. And who cut it off? None other than my other goat, Maki. And I saw y'all drew jiggers in my comments talking about how she was a fraud for getting packed up in two chapters like she Kashimo. And don't try not be like, oh no, I didn't say that. I knew Maki was a liar. I'd be like the watcher reading through those comments, bro. Y'all are not slick. The Jew jigger in question for today is Mr. Don't Fact Bro Don 5552. Talking about some, there's nothing left of her to take the Shoko. Nigga, if you're gonna diss a Zenin, diss the paraplegic bum that's currently inhabiting a 1,000 year old demon entity like he's an Airbnb. Nah, I heard. Back into the fray, not even two minutes after eating a black flash, bro. Even had Sukuna impressed. Yuji sees this, sees the position Sukuna is in right now, and he's like, damn, we can actually do this. All our hard work coming together. I know he had that inspirational music playing in his mind too. Thought they were about to cook, but that was not the case. But he forgot he was in Sukuna Kaisen. Comes in with the second black flash of the day. Crazy cause Nipple Dude somehow managed to get hit even though he was behind him the whole time. Bro had one job. And y'all know what happened the last time someone hit two black flashes. Dude's got the same smile as Gojo. It's about to go down. No break next week either. Gotta go crazy. Before we end it off, this video was sponsored by Anime Express. Anime Express has a variety of merchandise from all your favorite animes such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Naruto, Demon Slayer, One Piece, and others. They got a variety of stuff and cool things, such as hoodies, t-shirts, necklaces, and this dope-ass sword over here. Personally, my favorite is the Chosa hoodie, because as much as I be hating on bro, this shirt is tough as hell. And if you want 10% off, use my code NOAH10 at checkout. Link in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching.